Hey YouTube! So, I collect alarm clocks. Started several years ago. And in this video, I'm going to be telling you guys how it got started. Got a clip coming up for that. And then showing you guys the clocks in my collection. And don't worry, clocks are not taking over this channel. Not doing that at all. You guys might have seen a long time ago I made a playlist of some alarm clocks that I wanted. That was just filled with the more new, fun, innovative ones. So I'm going to show you guys my collection, what I have so far. And, you know, just talk a little bit about each clock, maybe. And tell you guys how I got started in this video. In coming videos, I'm going to talk to you about the pros and cons of having a cell phone as your alarm versus having an actual alarm clock. And, you know, between analog and digital, stuff like that. And I'm also going to talk about how to sync an alarm clock. And those will be in upcoming videos. So here, enjoy this clip, and I'll show you guys my collection. I was about 16 at the time. And I was sleeping here by the back door on a blue camping mat. Now the reason for that is because the only two rooms in the house are down there, the bedrooms. So the one straight ahead is my room and my mom's room. Have my stuff, toys, clothes, and mattress, and then I had some of my mom's toys and clothes. And then the one on the right is my dad's room slash the computer room. Now my dad has multiple sclerosis, so during the day he's stuck in an electric wheelchair, and at night we have a nice hospital bed frame where the head will raise up and the feet will raise up and down, and so he can change his position, and he's either changing the position of the bed, or listening to the radio or watching TV to distract himself from the pain. So my mom, who owns a chiropractic business now and then, she can't sleep with him and be able to get a good enough night's rest to wake up and provide for us. Thanks, Mom. So she was sleeping in our room down there on the mattress. And I was sleeping by the back door on a little blue camping pad. Which wasn't really that bad at all. Because prior to this, I had slept on the floor with just my pajamas, a blanket, and a couch pillow about this thick. And I draped the blanket over the heater vent so when the warm air turned on, it would get in a nice toasty warm in my blanket. It was wonderful. And no pad when I was sleeping prior to this, but when I had here, I was sleeping with a pad. So a little bit better, but I didn't mind sleeping on the hard floor. It was nice. So about this time, my parents asked me to start using an alarm clock. So right you see here is a blue softy dress. I was using a softy dress, but I was using a pink one. And it was on this same shelf. You see this one here. Now, I was kind of stupid back then when it came to alarm clocks because there's a snooze button, but I never use a snooze button. If I'm turned on and wake up, it rings, I get up, turn it off, and go back to bed. Not even using the snooze button. Now, the logic behind that is because unless I have something really interesting I want to wake up for, I don't want to wake up till later, so what, what's the point in using the snooze button? It's just going to interrupt my sleep, so I turn it off. Now you're probably wondering why I even bother turning it on at all during the night. Because you have to do it every time, every night. Otherwise it will ring at whatever time in the AM and PM. So the reason that I even bother to turn it on at night is because there are some mornings where there's some things I want to wake up and do and I'm so excited. If it's really interesting, bam, I'll just be out of bed. Sometimes even before the alarm rings. But um, most of the time though, if it's something I really want to wake up and do, then I need something like an alarm to wake me up from my sleep and get me out of that. So that then I can start waking up and remember what I want to do and I'll actually get up and go do it. So that's what I was using at the time. And a little pink softy got knocked off the shelf a few times. And it eventually broke. The, the plastic on the front broke and everything about it was just broken. So I had to throw it in the garbage can. And I was, I was sad. Because I didn't know it when I was using it. I wasn't annoyed by the clock. I, I didn't mind it. It was okay. But when I had to throw that thing away, I was just pretty sad. So right after that, I started using this clock, which is my mom's clock. We got, I got her at a thrift store. And that clock, I actually had placed closer to my bed, right around. And this area here was the dining room table, and I had it on the dining room table. So when I started using this clock, it was a little bit surprising. I was expecting a nice um, ringing, which I will show you here. Now this, whoops, this clock doesn't have a ringing at all. Did you hear that? 
has a beeping noise. There's no snooze button on it, and but it had kind of surprised me a bit. But I was using this for a while, and I knew that I couldn't go on using this because it was my mom's clock and she needed it to tell time in the front room. So I started looking for a different clock. And, well, sort of. I was at, I was at Sabres one time. And this is where the story kind of gets mixed up in my head just a bit. There's two versions I remember. I'll tell you both and tell you which one I think is uh, most likely. So, for one version, I was in Savers one time, and I was in the electronics section, and I put something back on the shelf. Um, when I did that, I kind of pushed things to make room, and something fell off. And so at first I was like, okay, let's just quietly walk away and hope I didn't break anything. Then I was like, no, wait, I should check. So I looked, and I saw this clock. Angels started singing in my head, it was amazing, I immediately picked it up, I ran over to the test center and I plugged it in, and it ran. The snooze button was pushed down, and I didn't know at the time that you could change the time uh, forward or backwards five minutes to um, release the snooze. So we were kind of stuck, but we went up to the front and they said that we could uh, return it if, you know, or we, we, sorry, we could exchange it if we wanted to you know, get something else for it. It didn't work. And we mentioned like the snooze button was a problem, and she was like, oh, it works. Because when we got out there, it jiggled around enough that it popped up. And you're like, oh, well, we couldn't actually test the alarm because the snooze button was pushed down. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, 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 that's fine. We'll take it home and test it. So we took it home, I plugged it in, waited five minutes, it rang. And I was so happy and excited. Now, the next clock I got is this clock right here. The reason you're seeing a picture is because I don't have it. And you know, it, um, it broke, sadly. But I got that clock because this one wasn't loud enough. So I was using that for a while and it was a pretty nice clock. Now, the, the other variation of the story is where I found that clock first as a replacement for the little metal clock. And then I saw this clock, and of course I'm in love with this shape and design, this softy. So we got it. But I'm pretty sure I found this first, and then I needed something louder. But that is how the Alarm Clocks collection got started. All right. So, yeah. Got several clocks in here. A few of the clocks are set up. So I'll go ahead and get to those. Sorry for the grain in this video, guys. It's I don't really have a really great camera. So, I've got this clock right here. This is a Spartus clock. A little bit of dust. It is model number... Focus. It's not focusing, but that is model number 120. One. Don't ask me why it's not focusing. Anyways, model number 1201. Just a basic alarm clock. You've got your alarm set button, which is your snooze button. All the basic features, you know. Just a big little clock. And I'm going to be getting that one in the back in a bit. This one still needs to be set up. It's got um, just a nice west clocks. Softy Drowse with a dial light, and see if I can focus on Put some light on this. If not, I'll just read it. But this is the Sizzler Purple Drowse dial light clock. So not the Softy, but it, it's the same clock. You know, just different color. Um, most of these clocks I picked up at Savers, so that one there has a little crack on it. But I was able to glue the piece back on. And, you know, from far away, it doesn't look too bad. It still looks like a nice clock. It works. All of these work. Coming over here into a dark corner of my bed, we have this, um, pulling you out into the light here, we have this nice equity clock, Amber Glow. Um, I don't know where the model number is on this one, 
Unless it's just down there covered up by sticker, which I should still try and remove. But here, cool feature about this clock is the amber glow. Now let me get a little bit closer. There we go. So it looks really bright in the center on here. In real life, it doesn't look so bright, but it has a nice orangish glow to it. Coming down here, we have this nice CD two band radio digital dual wave clock, three zone multifunction display. It's a CD player, really nice. It's got CD player. Headphones, a lot of buttons for daylight savings time, CD wake track, wake cancel. It's actually quite complicated. <laughs> Although it is a nice clock, it's by GE. And our model number for this one here is the model number 7-4901A. I've looked online for manuals for this and I haven't found any manuals for this clock online, but it's nice. It's got speakers on the side, which, let me just turn on the radio. So there's a quick sample there, so you get the idea. I don't want to copyright infringement. But you get the idea. Yeah. So you, yeah, it's a nice clock right there. Now, we'll come back over here. And I'm going to do the ones in the box last. But... So this, you pick this clock right up here, is my newest addition to my collection. Um, it's actually a trade from a friend. So the pictures you're seeing right now, this is a clock that I used to have. And I'm actually kind of already missing cute little guy. Or big clock, I should say. Not really cute little, but it's a big clock. It was a nice... Uh, radio clock, and uh, I know the pictures are a little bit fuzzy. I was quickly taking them as I was heading out to give this to my friend so that he could drive off and go home. But, um, so we traded for that one. If he likes it, he'll be keeping it. If not, I'll give him back his twin bells. Maybe help him look for a different solution. But, uh, I've wanted twin bell clocks, so this is kind of a win, you know. Nice clock. It's got a light. Glows in the dark. I'll be showing more off. And, but this one is the Sharp SPC-800. Basic little battery-powered twin bell clock. Which I wish they made. I haven't looked this up yet. But it'd be nice if they made a plug-in twin bell clock. And even nicer if it was a twin bell clock that was digital. So that you could more accurately set the time. Like, I try to wake up by 6.30. This rang like 6.27 this morning, so I tweaked it just a little bit. And we'll see where it rings the next morning. But there's that. Now going to the, all the other clocks I have in the box here. We'll start with this big one here. And I'm figuring out where to set them up and get them all synced up. This is a nice... Um, this is a nice forward reverse set. Slash dual wake up. Panasonic clock, FM radio, and AM too. But this is the Panasonic model number RC-6210. Pretty nice clock here. Um, unique thing about this one, I would say, haven't seen this on a lot of clocks, but for setting the time, you've got forward and reverse, forward and reverse, and fast and slow. So I can go really fast through AM and PM, or I can go slow through it and get more precise. That's the thing about that one. It's got volume. The speaker gets pretty loud, but the volume goes up a little bit too high for the speaker's capability. Eh, whatever. So we got that one there. And, ah, forgot to mention with the CD player clock, that one, it was, um, for a while it was kaput. It just stopped working on me. So then recently I was getting the box out of setting back up. I, I took a look at it, plugged it in, and hey, it just worked. So hopefully it keeps on working. If not, I'll see if I can fix it. Hopefully it's a nice one. If it completely goes kaput, I'll look for a replacement. Specific model, actually. You know, I want a specific model. It's part of my collection. So... Another clock here. This one was actually broken right when I got it. My parents picked it up for me at the at Savers. So you can see 
pretty big bruise there. Still a little signs of the sticker there. This is a Durabrand clock. Um, there's the Durabrand logo. The broken thing about it was you couldn't turn off the alarm. <laughs> like, I mean, I would set this to off and it would just keep ringing. But it's news, but you know, it's an uh, AM, FM radio alarm clock. And I don't, I think it's still, I've been able to turn it off recently. I checked that out. More testing will prove that it really is truly fixed. Um, but I can't turn on the radio except by using sleep, which not too bad, you know. And so this is, Durabrand I believe is a Walmart brand. Like Walmart made Durabrand and so there were the products that they were making. But this is the Durabrand AM FM clock radio model CR-502. And it lists frequency range and stuff, so you got that one. Sorry, I just pressed the button on the camera, so you got that one. Then we have another West Clox Dialyte, and this one is, I still need to move, clear off some of the sticker, but careful, because this one's a sticker, not actually printed on the clock, like some of the others, but this one is the Bold 2 Drouse Dialyte. So, very nice, nice clock, snooze button on top, just like the others. <laughs> Now this one, you guys recognize this from the clip we watched. Yeah, it's a very special clock. There's actually a chip in the corner up there. Take the tape off and actually glue it down. I think that one actually happened because of me on accident. A few times where like the glasses popped off. Or no, plastic, sorry, the plastic popped off and the hand fell off one time. But this is the Softy Drouse Dilate. So just a softy in a different color. I think for like colors that are really a little bit more extreme, like that one, they give them different names. And I'm actually right now looking at an orange drouse. I don't know, remember the name of that one. But yes, I'm looking, oops, looking at an orange drouse. So another clock here, nice little battery operated analog travel clock. Quartz clock, which I believe quartz is just the movement in the clock. It's not the specific brand. So I'm not sure what brand this cute little clock is. And you guys can see it kind of here. I'll give you a better view. See how it, there's its actual bumps on the front grooves. But it says quartz on the back with whatever those two half circle things are. And um, 588-08. So I'm guessing that's the model number, but I'm not sure. It could really be anything. Because really, you could have any manufacturer that would just take this basic clock configuration and design their own hands and stuff and front for it, but it looks nice. Comes from yeah, China. And then the last clock, well, there's one more that I'm trying to fix the light bulb on. Last clock here is this nice fold up picture frame travel clock. And if you notice what I've done in the picture frame here, done a little on and on, repetitive type of thing. The clock inside itself, inside itself. Very nice, this is another quartz clock. Um, move the uh, alarm hand out of the way so we can see. Probably not clear for you guys, but that says Zinedanze. That's X I N D A D I A N Z I. I probably pronounced that wrong, but this is actually a quite nice looking clock. And you can kind of push them in and they'll lock together or you can have it like more like this for stability. But the back of the clock has... Well, well, well. By the way, the blue one and this one are both missing the um battery cover. I think this one I put the battery in and tried to fit the cover on and it broke. So it was like the, the double A was too big. But then, um, the, the triple A's are too small. But, again, we have 588-08. So I believe that refers to the model of the, um, model of the clock itself with the battery thing and the gears, not the frame that it's in. But this one's a nice little clock right there. And, you know, that's it for my alarm clocks collection. Um, future videos, be reviewing these and the other two things that I said.
Thank you guys for watching. See you next.